Okay. So, I would like to uh, get back to, I want to get back to coloring, but I, I, I insist that I've got to prove the Galai identities. It's a marker. Okay, and, and this is why we've spent, why I've spent so much time on these four parameters. So one more time, so we've got that alpha, alpha prime, beta, beta prime. So alpha, so alpha is the, per graph G, is the order of the largest, largest independent set of vertices. Independent set of vertices. And beta of G is the order of the smallest set of vertices that cover the edges. And so I won't give you the punchline. So let's work towards the punchline. So, uh, so the punchline will be on top. The punchline will be what the Galai identity is. So let's let, uh, uh, so G is a graph, let G be a graph, any graph. And um, choose, uh, I want to choose a largest set of independent vertices. So let G be a graph and uh, let's say I is a largest set of independent vertices. Remind me, what does independent mean? Independent vertices? I keep forgetting. Independent vertices? Do, do I? No, no, no two of them are adjacent. So, so, so it's a, it's an independent set of, of vertices. Okay, so that's, uh, that would be alpha of G. So there's alpha of G of these. Now, what can you tell me about uh, what remains? So these points down here, what can you tell me about, uh, what, can you tell me anything about the, the points down in uh, V minus, let's call this, uh, this set I? And what can you tell me about V minus I? All edges are incident with at least one vertex in them. All the edges are incident with at least one vertex. And in fact, every vertex here is adjacent to something here. Why? One more time. Every vertex down here is adjacent to at least something here. Why is that? Because it, it doesn't, it will be included in the... Yeah. Uh, this is the largest set of independent points. If this... If there's a vertex down here that wasn't, that didn't have an adjacency up here, I would have a larger set of independent points. So every vertex here, and I'm just going to, I mean, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be one, maybe there's a couple. Now, where else could edges be in this graph? Where else could edges be in this graph? On the bottom. On the bottom. There's no edges on top, so I could have edges here. So what can you tell me? So what can you tell me about V minus I? The, the set of vertices, V is the, the whole vertex set, I is that set up here. What, what can you tell me about this set of vertices? It's a vertex cover? It, it's a, it's a, uh, it covers all the edges. So this covers all the edges. Now, just for a moment, let me come over here and suppose I have, I have a set of vertices that covers all the edges. Here's a set of vertices, let's call it S, that covers all the vertices that's smaller than V minus I. Suppose S and S is smaller than 
V minus I. So suppose I have a set of vertices, and it's an edge cub. So it covers all the edges. And uh, it's smaller than, strictly smaller than V minus I. Then what can you tell me about, uh, what can you tell me about these vertices here? Larger than I. It's, it's larger than, it's larger than I, and... They're independent. And they're independent. But wait, I chose this to be the largest independent set. Okay, so there can be no smaller edge cover. There can be no smaller cover, vertex cover of all the edges. So this can't happen. So in fact, the order of V minus I, the order of V minus I must equal beta of G. It's the smallest, it's the order of the smallest vertex cover of all the edges. So what can you tell me about alpha and beta? So theorem, here's the theorem, alpha of G plus beta of G equals N. So I've got I've got all of the all of the vertices are covered exactly once in these two sets of vertices. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind repeating yourself, would you mind saying again why? Uh, let's see, uh, further to the right under S, how we know that? Uh, oh, oh, sorry, uh, further to the right, uh, where we have the S less than or equal to B minus I. Yeah. Okay. Suppose 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 I have a set that's smaller than this. Yes. Okay. So this is a, this covers all the edges. There's mm -hmm. a, a set of vertices that covers all the edges. So what can you say? Oh, about, okay. Because it covers all the edges, therefore there can't. Be it's a, it's a, it covers all the edges. Okay. One, one more time. Let, let's let's make sure you get this. So this is a set, and there may be some edges in here. Okay. So I take a set that's that covers all the edges that maybe is smaller than g minus i, smaller than this. So suppose, in other words, s. Is, is equal to beta of G, and uh, this is V minus I is bigger than F. Then there can be no edges here. If there were any edges here, these vertices wouldn't cover these. So this must be an independent set of vertices. Independent, uh, independent set of vertices. But we, we chose alpha to be the largest such one. And now I'm showing you that if that was the case, we'd have a larger one. So what you have if there's a contradiction? So that would be a contradiction. So in fact, the Galli identity gives me that alpha plus beta is equal to n. And that's for any graph g. Notice I started with any graph g. Well, what do you think? There's another Galli identity. What do you think? Oh, I'm a, alpha, <laughs> alpha prime of G plus beta prime of G is equal to N. And the important thing is equal to. So if I take alpha prime is the order of the largest, largest set of independent, independent edges. Which the book calls the matching number. This is a matching number. I, I much refer. I much prefer calling it the edge independence number because that's kind of what it is. Then I, t I look at the, re the remaining vertices, and let's say there's k of them: a1, a2, a3, a k. So what I want to do is I want to come up with a, what do I need to come up with a, uh, uh, a set that, that covers all, a set, of, uh, a set of edges that covers all the vertices. Now, what can you tell me about, uh, are there any edges in here? Are there any edges in here? 
One more time. This was the largest set of independent edges. Can there be any edges amongst these vertices here? Why not? Because if there exists uh, two vertices of edge, it will be included in the... Yeah, if management. there was an edge in here, then I would have a larger set of independent edges. Okay, so this is an independent set of vertices. It's an independent set of vertices. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to remember I'm looking for an edge cover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick edges for, for, each of, for each of those. And they can go to the same point. So what I have is, is that these vertices, these vertices cover, these vertices cover all these vertices cover all the edges. These vertices, and how many, how many vertices are there? So there's, uh, let's see, sorry. I want to cover all of these, so there are, there are this, this, uh, this number of edges. So let's say uh, this is, uh, what do we say, alpha prime. So I'm going to take two alpha prime plus, sorry, alpha prime plus beta prime. So that's the number of edges, and that also is equal to n. Okay? So, so I want you to, so the, 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 the vertex version is pretty simple. I want you to, uh, over the next, over the weekend, homework is due, last homework is due? Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, over the weekend, I would like you to think about why that's the case and how that mimics the proof of of the vertex version, this is the edge version. Okay, one more time, we're gonna we're gonna look at we're gonna look at this number of edges plus this number of edges. For each one of these vertices, I'm gonna pick an edge, and that's gonna give me this inequality. Sorry, this equality. Okay. So the, again, these are called the Galai identities. So there's this relationship. There's this association between the independence number, independence number four for, for vertices and the cover of edges and the independence number of edges, independence number of edges and the cover of vertices. So there's this, this association with one and the other. Okay, so, so again, this, these four parameters are things that you want to spend some time thinking about. I've given you several problems to look at, look at these at these values. So there's plenty of examples where you look at the values of of these four out four um, four parameters to get a feel for what the, what they are. Okay. Okay, so finally, I want to get back to where we started two weeks ago with the chromatic number. Oh my gosh, what? What was the chromatic number? Okay, so there's, there's a, 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 and again, if you remember, this all started with maps of the United States. Question? Okay, so this started with maps of the United States. And we're going to eventually get to coloring maps, as, we'll, as we, we, we'll see. Probably sometime next week, we'll talk, about, we'll talk about coloring maps. Okay, so remind me, what does it mean, what does it mean to, I wanna color, color the vertices. of a graph. Okay, and and often we're gonna think of this as a proper coloring. And there are there are uh, versions of, of improper colorings, but we want to color this so that adjacent points get different colors. So a proper coloring has Adjacent, adjacent vertices are assigned 
different colors. Now, just, uh, just to think ahead to next Thursday, gee, sort of everything I ever did with vertices, I kind of asked the same question for edges. So as you are coloring lots of examples in, in the homework, I've asked you to co uh, color some things. We're going to do a bunch of coloring today. I want you to think about color the edges of a graph. Well, what's the, what's the um, sort of, uh, what kind of, what would correspond to two, two vertices being adjacent? I have two edges. Two edges, when would I want two edges to have different colors? Incident. If they're incident. So I want to color the edges of the graph so that incident edges are assigned different colors. Different colors. Okay, we'll 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 get back to this in maybe towards the end of class today. But I want to do uh, uh, several examples. But first, just to remind you, the smallest number of colors of colors necessary. Smallest number of colors necessary to color the vertices is called the chromatic number. And we have, a, we have a graph G denoted chi of G. Smallest number of colors necessary to color the vertices. So I'm going to put a V here. If you had to guess, if you had to guess, well, what do you, what would you call it? You're, you're, you're at, the, at the dawning of this idea of coloring. What, what would you? What, what if I wanted to color the edges? So that two incident. Uh, let's let, let me just uh, let's just make sure we're on the same page. This is a graph. This is, these are not colored edges. Can you color the edges so that two incident edges get different colors? That can you color the edges of this graph? so that incident edges, incident means they share a vertex, incident edges get different colors. How many colors do you have? Okay, so I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna actually use different colors, we'll use numbers. So one, two, one, two, and three. Okay, and, and the question that really came up as these parameters were developed was, is there a relationship between vertex coloring and edge coloring? And we'll, we'll get back to that. Now notice this is, this is the smallest number of colors, um, but where we can talk about a proper edge coloring. So I could have colored the edges with five colors, but you can't color the edges of this graph with two colors. I mean, you could, but then you would have two edges incident of the same color. Okay? And just out of curiosity, uh, what if I had any, what about C7? Bless you. It's still three. It's still three. What about C8? Two, three. C8? Two. Two. Wait, wait a second. What's the chromatic number of C7? So when I color the vertices, let's, let's draw this up. Here's C7. I think that's seven. Oh, that's, uh, that looks like too many. There's C7. I want to color the edges so that incident edges get different colors. What's the smallest number of colors that I need? Three. Okay, so color, this is color one, two, one, two, one, two, and we're stuck, three. Okay. Well, that's, that's very similar to if I took a C7 and colored the vertices. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. 
So one thing that I want you to think about as you do some of the coloring problems for the homework for next Tuesday is, um, are, these, are these two, are these equal? Is, is the chromatic number, oh, let's see, I have to give this, a, I have to give this, a, uh, so this is denoted chi prime of G. So is, can you find a graph where the chromatic number is different than the, different than the edge chromatic number? Edge chromatic number, coloring the edges, coloring the vertices. Okay, can you find, can you find a graph where these are not the same? C, oh, what about the C, let's just, uh, C4, what's the chromatic number of C4? Two. Two. One, two, one, two. Edge, edge chromatic number? A, B, A, B. Well, it looks like they're the same. Okay, so I want you to think about, um, is there a graph whose chromatic number and edge chromatic number is different? And how do they relate to one another? Okay, so that's, a, that's a, an, an additional problem that I want you to be looking at. Okay? Okay, so sticking with just, in this point, the chromatic number. So can you tell me what graphs have chromatic number one? I would put an edge in here, the chromatic number would have to be at least two. If I only put one edge, then it's exactly two. What graphs have chromatic number two? Now, now a path. A path. Path. Path has chromatic number two. Bipartite? Oh, oh, what? A path has chromatic number two. One, two, one, two, one, and so forth. Whatever. If it's odd, it ends in, in one. If it's even, if it's uh, odd, odd, no, odd order, it ends in one. And if even order, it ends in two. But what was that? Bipartite. Huh. Yes. Huh. What's about? Remind me what a bipartite graph is. It's a two bi has, has bipartitions that are independent sets. Yeah. It's and, and I gotta have at least one edge in there. I mean, this is a partition of the vertices into two independent sets. If I have no edges in there, then what's the chromatic number? One. One. So as long as I have an edge in there. then I would give all of these vertices color one, all of these vertices color two, and I would know that there's no two ones adjacent and no two twos adjacent. What about three? Tripartite. Tripartite. Um, well, certainly they're, they're tripartite. Can you give me, I mean, you know, the, tri, where, where the, tri, the, the tripartition, the tripartition comes from all the vertices colored one would be independent, all the vertices colored two would be independent, all the vertices colored three would be independent. Can you give me a graph condition? Let me say, let me, let me make this, maybe I'll. Can you give me a graph condition that would imply that the chromatic number is greater than or equal to three. Think small-ish. 
the, uh, say that again? What about the independent sense? Is there, a, is there a small graph that has chromatic number three? C5. C5. Wait, C, oh, wait a second. C3 has chromatic one, two, it has to be three. C5? One, two, one, two, three. Oh, odd cycles. Okay, so so in fact, here's 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 a theorem. If G contains an odd cycle, then the chromatic number of G is not equal. We can't say equal, but we can say greater than or equal to three. All right, uh, so let's see, I got, I got odd cycles. We got the idea of bipartite. And, and in fact, in fact um, really, someone mentioned this, when the chromatic number is three, if the chromatic number is, is three, that would mean that it, I can partition the vertices into three independent sets. Partition the vertices into three independent sets. So that would make it tripartite. And and if I can partition the vertices into k independent sets, so these are independent sets, so those, those correspond to independent sets and there's k of them, then at, at this point, all I can say, maybe it's more than enough, the chromatic number is less than or equal to k. We don't know that this is the best partition, right? It might be that uh, I might be able to partition it in a different way and come up with fewer parts. But you know, in terms of in terms of coloring vertices, this would be color, color one, two, three, four, and k. Okay, so so in fact, if I can actually partition it, and that's that's exactly what you're doing when you're coloring when you're coloring the vertices of a graph. Okay, so um, so uh, I'm I'm on page three seventeen. Uh, uh, the chromatic number for the cycle is either two or three, depending on whether n is odd or even. The chromatic number of a graph is two, if and only if it's bipartite. Even, and, and notice, there's the, the one condition that it's got to have at least one edge. Just, uh, okay, so here's a graph. It has no edges, but I, I partition the vertices into two parts, two parts of independent vertices. That doesn't mean that's, that's not enough. You've got to have at least an edge. So as soon as you have an edge in there, then the chromatic number is at least two. Okay, so, so, um, so we, we know, and, and now what I want to, uh, so what graphs, what graphs have high chromatic number? When would a graph have, a, have high chromatic number? Is there is there some is there some structure in a graph that forces the chromatic number to be large? The graph is complete. If the if the graph is complete, so in fact the chromatic number the chromatic number of Kn is equal to n. So do we have a do we have a symbol for the clique number? I think we did, but uh, so let me let's let me let's define it. I don't know. So um, 
the clique number of a graph is the order of the largest complete subgraph. In G. Clique number of G. And I, to me it seems like we've, we've defined this, I don't know, I, I, I always know it as omega of G. I'm not sure what the book calls it, but he uses omega. He uses omega. So, so uh, look, if I have a, a clique with oh, omega vertices in it, each one of those vertices have to be colored with a distinct color. That's a pretty good bound. That's a pretty good bound. Is the chromatic number equal to the clique number? Not necessarily. Think, think about all the examples we have here. Think about all of the examples we have here. Like maybe over in this area right here. So what's the largest, let's, let, let's look at C5. What's the largest clique in C5? Two. Two. But the chromatic number is three. So certainly, certainly I know that the chromatic number is greater than or equal to the clique number. Why? Can you prove that? Someone prove that for me? Why would the chromatic number be greater than or equal to the clique number? Remember, well, remind me again. What, what is the clique number of the? I have graph G. The clique number is? Or order of the largest complete subgraph. The order of the largest complete subgraph. So I'm going to, here's my, here's my, there's my graph G. And somewhere in my graph, I have, here's the largest complete subgraph. How big do you want that to be? T? Okay, so suppose this is a, a KT. Now this is not the whole graph, right? There's more, there's more edges. So what can you tell me about the chromatic number of this graph? At least T. Chromatic number is at least as large as the clique number of the graph. Okay? And, and again, it sure would be nice if it was always equal. But we know an example where that's not the case. The chromatic number is three. The clip, what's the order of the largest complete graph? Two. Okay, and, and in fact, and in fact, one of the things that I'd like you to think about is can you construct a graph? Not right now, but you know, you have all weekend. And since not many of you are from Kentucky, you won't be watching the Kentucky Derby, which is this weekend. <laughs> so can you construct a graph that has chromatic number uh, N and clique number M, where um, N, of course, is greater than or equal to M for any N greater than or equal to M. So this is for any. Okay, one more time. Can you construct a graph, G, that has chromatic number N, clique number M, M is less than, <coughs> strictly, uh, I mean, less than or equal to is pretty simple. By the way, what is the, the chromatic number of the complete graph? 
M. M. Sorry. Okay. So, um, so uh, yeah, that, that's not very interesting if we just get the complete graph. Because so I want the chromatic number to be much larger, much larger than the clique number. Can you can you find such a thing? Okay. So I want you to I want you to you know while you're watching the the derby and the pre-derby um, uh, festivities, you should, be, um, you should be playing with uh, graphs at all times. Okay, so, um, so I want you to look at uh, page 317 and at your tables, there's uh, two observations. Let G be a graph with at least one edge. At least one edge. Why, uh, so so uh, we've, we've actually shown observation three. Uh, so chromatic number is equal to 2 if and only if G is bipartite. So we know if it's bipartite, it's 2. Now, if it's got chromatic number greater than 2, then it can't be bipartite. Okay, so uh, let's just go to 8.3.6. The question, for n between 2 and 5, construct all graphs of order n. This is not too many. You might want to go past 5. But it asks for, for between n, n between 2 and 5, construct all graphs such that the chromatic number is 1 less. Chromatic number of the complete graph on n vertices is what? n. So now 1 less than that. Construct a graph for each, for each number of vertices between 2 and 5. Chromatic number one less than it. I don't even hear pen pencils shuffling on Two, 
Can I, can I interrupt you for just a moment? What if I what if I change that to can you give me all the graphs of order n that have chromatic number n? Just a complete, complete, graph. Complete. complete graph. No others. Order n, chromatic number n. So what am I going to need to do to have chromatic number n minus one? Okay, so 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 let's see. If I take uh, if I take Km minus an edge, so that imagine that's Km, and that these two points are independent. Then that graph has chromatic number n minus one. Now the question is, are there other graphs on n vertices or five vertices? Are there other graphs on five vertices? that aren't just K5 minus an edge. K5 minus an edge has chromatic number. Let's go back here. Kn minus an edge has chromatic number. N minus, it's a mumbly, but K5 minus an edge has chromatic number four. Are there other graphs on five vertices that have chromatic number four? Minus two edges. Uh, listen, listen, what? So K4, sorry, K5, so let me draw it. This graph? I think this graph is just missing these two edges. Oh wait, no, but the one is still connected to all four. So how about a K5 minus two edges which are incident with the same vertex? Okay, so incident, uh, so you want me to take these two edges out? Yes. Okay, so let's see if I can draw that. Is that it? Let's see, I got, uh, uh, let's see, I got uh, one, two, three, four, uh, uh, so that's that's too many edges. Let's throw that away. So that's a uh, and then this and then that's another edge. I mean, oh yeah, one more. What's the chromatic number? Four. The chromatic number is four. Three. Four. But, I mean, here's the thing. So these two could be in the same could be the same color. Chromatic number, imagine that we're coloring these with colors. So these two could be the same color, and then what about these three vertices? They all have to be different colors. So that's precisely what, what you want to do. What about uh, what about this graph? <coughs> this 
There's another graph on five vertices. What's the chromatic number? You sure? Four. Okay. Four, three, four or three? Four. Okay. So why is it four? K4 is in there. Yeah, that's it. Okay, K4 is in there. Okay, so if I want a graph on n vertices that has chromatic number n minus 1, what would assure me that I can, that I must have used n minus 1 colors? It contains k n minus 1. K, k n minus 1. <coughs> and then this is adjacent to some of them. It's not adjacent to all of them. And this assures me that I have chromatic number n minus 1. Is there another graph? Is there a graph? Is there a graph on four vertices? Sorry, five vertices. Is there a graph on five vertices that doesn't contain a K4? By the way, here's the K4. Is there a graph on five vertices that doesn't contain K4 that has chromatic number equal to, what do we want, 4? As soon as it has K4 in it, chromatic number's got to be at least 4. Okay. Is there a graph on five vertices that, doesn't, that has chromatic number 4 that doesn't have a K4 in it? Okay, there's another problem that you'll work on during the Kentucky Derby. Okay, so I want to, uh, I want to, uh, I want to give you one, one more, pro one, uh, another graph to color, another graph, oh, I got plenty of time, another graph to color, and then I want to talk about how do we, uh, I want to talk about algorithms to color graphs. Okay, so I want you to look at uh, page 318. By the way, there's lots of lots of examples that you can color that you can color. And by the way, page 320, even though the number the, the the problem that I gave you was problem number six, if you didn't notice, there are 13 parts. 13 parts to problem number six. It's got to be worth at least 13 points. Okay, one more time. Uh, so so here's this uh, here's this graph. What's the chromatic number of this graph? Let me, let me back up. What's the clique number? What's the size of the largest cl clique in this graph? No, 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 eight. Okay, what's in the middle? In the middle, I have a C4. It goes here, 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 and here. It goes here, 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 and here. So this has, uh, it only has eight points. Did I get all the answers? Yes. It's a pretty graph. What's the chromatic number? Without, without, don't even, don't even start coloring it. What, what's, what's the minimum number of colors? What, how many colors do you know you have to use? Three. 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 Why three? Triangle. There's a triangle. Okay. So, so can you color it with three colors? It's a good place to start. By the way, this is on page, this graph is on page, page 318, question 8.3.9.
What, 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 any, uh, what, what do we think? So someone give me an immediate lower bound. Immediately, I look at this and I know that I need at least three, three colors. Why? Because there's a triangle. Is there a K4? No. C4. So I need at least three colors. So let's try and color with three colors. Eight points. Okay, so what is the independence number? Okay, so wait, wait, so what is what is the independence number? Okay, so so what's the largest set of independent vertices? Let, 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 one more time. And the independence number is the order of the largest set of independent vertices. It's two. Come on. It's two. Oh, the independence number is two. Mm -hmm. So, so I, oh, we, let's see, that's the alpha of G two. is two. Ah, oh, well, can you tell me about the chromatic number? How many vertices are there? Eight. Eight. So, what well, can you tell me about the chromatic number? Ah, wait a second. Chromatic number of G is greater than or equal to 8 over 2. Who was trying to color with three colors? <laughs> Who was trying to color with two colors? Uh, everybody knew it had to be at least four. I, I tried three. Okay, so we know that the why is the chromatic number at least four? 8 over 2. Because because the, if I color it with four colors, that means that I'm going to partition the vertices into independent sets. So this is the very best I can do. So here is a here is a so the chromatic number the chromatic number is greater than or equal to the number of vertices over the independence number the vertex independence number. But is that enough? So can you color this graph with four colors? Yeah. You think you can? Tell me. Oh. So um, what do you want me to start? The left top one. With this one? One? Yes. And two. Two. And one. And one. And two. And two. And then this is four. And this is four. Three. Three. Four. four. Three. 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 And we know that's best possible. Uh, once again, why do we know it's best possible? Because. No, the lower bond is four. Yeah, yeah, because the independence number, the independence number is two. 
Now, you have to really check to make sure that there's no sets of three independent vertices. I'm pretty sure you can check that. But you might want to, might want to make sure I'm not, I'm not, not, not telling the truth. Okay. So, so notice here's a very nice condition for a bound on the chromatic number. Because again, essentially, every color has to correspond to an independent set. And the largest that any one color can be is the independence number. So I'm dividing n into pieces that are at most this big. So we get this nice point. How often it, it attains that is not clear. OK, so one last, one last thing I want, to, I want to talk about. So um, let's take a graph G. Let's take a, let's, G is a graph. And let's uh, label the vertices. The vert vertices are V1, V2, V3, Vn. I don't want to have to think too hard. I don't want to have to think too hard. I don't want to have to move vertices around. I don't want to have to play with this. I order the vertices, and I just Step by step. Step one, let me put step one. Step one, color V1 with color one. Step I, color VI with the smallest color not adjacent, not adjacent, I'll, I'll put that, not adjacent to VI. So for example, uh, let's, uh, how about the, the Peterson, we haven't called the Peterson graph yet. My gosh. What's the chromatic number of the Peterson graph? It's got to be about 10. We haven't, I haven't even drawn the Pearson graph in a long time. Let me, let, let, don't get too excited. How many colors do you need for the five vertices on the outside? How many colors do I need for the five vertices on the outside? Three, because it's a, or and, and it's an odd cycle. By the way, we haven't talked about this is the this is the quote unquote normal Peterson graph. Let me just give you some things to think about while you're watching that Kentucky Derby. Okay, so that looks like uh, that looks like too many. That's uh, five. There's a seven cycle. And now what I want to do is I want to put a seven cycle in, I want to put, uh, there's a generalized. See, let's go here, skip two, skip two, skip two, skip two, skip two, skip two. This is a, a different Peterson graph. It's important that it has, notice five is prime, seven is prime. If you try and do this with nine, you won't, it, it's not so pretty. It's not as pretty. You might think it's very pretty, but it's not as pretty. 11 gives you a nice graph. But you know, what's the, what's the this, these, are, these are things for you to play with. What's the chromatic number? What's the smallest number of colors? to color this so that each color 
corresponds to a, an independent set, and we're using as few colors as possible. You think, it's, you think the, the chromatic number for the original Peterson graph is four? Any guesses on seven? Okay, so that should, that should keep you busy. I'm going to erase this. You can, you can draw it. We haven't drawn the Peterson graph. I felt we needed to draw it at least once this week. Okay, so now, again, the greedy algorithm. Step I. So I'm going to color, color D1 with color 1. Okay, step 2, I'm going to color D2 with the smallest possible color that's available. Okay, so I'm going to color, color VI, that should be VI, with the smallest color not adjacent to VI. So, so at some point, how many, how many vertices have I colored when I get up to <coughs> vertex VI? What did, I'm sorry, what did how many say? How many vertices have I colored when I get up to VI? Oh, before you've covered VI, I minus one. I minus one. So we might have to use as many as I colors, but you know, I'm just gonna, I look at the colors that are adjacent to VI, and I pick the smallest one that's available. Okay? Does everybody understand the algorithm? Okay, so here's, here's an interesting problem. Okay, turn to page 324. How, how, how easy a graph can this be? Okay, there's the graph. And uh, just, uh, just so you, you, you know I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I'm, I'm not that bad, I, I know that you've got to use at least three colors. Well, why do I know that? Because there's a, because there's a, a K3 and C3. Okay. okay, and there's a C5. Okay, so I'm going to give you an ordering. So I'm going to give you an ordering on the vertices. So where are the orderings? Okay, and, okay. so, so, um, so we're going we're gonna to label the vertices. So the first time I label the vertices, notice I'm labeling them with V1, V2, V3, V4, V5. And my greedy algorithm is going to start with V1, color the first available color. But I haven't colored anything once the first available color. One. Okay. Then, then I'm going to go to V2. What's the first available color? One. Well, it's, it's still one. Okay, then I'm going to go to V3. What's the first available color? Okay, so so just make sure. Let's say, uh, so this was this is V1, this is V2, this is V3. Which one's V4? Top. Top. So my greedy algorithm. I start with V1 and I give it color one. So let me use um, let me use. I'm going to use blue. Okay, so this is going to be color one. <coughs> color one, C1. Now I'm going to go to the next, it, I'm, I'm looking at the vertices in order. So I go over to vertex two. What's the smallest color available that I can use for color two? C1. Now I go to vertex three. What's the smallest color available for V3? C2. Okay, so I can't use C1, so it's got to be C2. Now I go to V4. What's the smallest color available? I'm using Cs. I could just use 1, 2, 3, 4. What's the smallest, smallest color available for V4? C3. C3. And, what's the, and, and now what am I going to color? So what's V5 is adjacent to C1, C2, C3. So I have to color C5 with... So I have to color. I have to use that. I have to use C4 to color V5. Can you color this graph with fewer than four colors? Okay. Now don't don't look at the ordering. Don't look at the ordering. Just look at the graph. There's the graph. 
Can you color it with fewer than four colors? Yeah. Wait, wait a second, let me, let me back up. Can you color it with fewer than three colors? No? no. Why not? Because there's a C3, because it's not bipartisan. Okay, so I need at least three colors. Okay, so I'm going to throw out the ordering. I'm just going to color this. By the way, if you look at the ordering on part C, V1, V2, V3, V4. Oh, look, you just go around the circle. Let's see, this is color, this is color one, color two, color three, color two, color three. So the idea of this, this greedy coloring is, is interesting because it will always color the graph. The question is, does it color the graph with the fewest number of colors? Okay, and that's the key, is to color this with as few colors as possible. Okay, so, so this idea of the greedy coloring is, is, uh, is kind of important. Okay, so what I want you to do is look at, uh, so um, uh, uh, bottom of page 325, let you be the graph here, this crazy graph. It's not crazy, but this graph. Looks like it's got seven vertices. Order the vertices in two different ways, and for each way, apply the algorithm, and help us find an upper bound for the chromatic number. Notice, notice an upper bound on the chromatic number, it was four, but you know I did better, so we knew the chromatic number was, was greater, less than or equal to three, and why do I know that the chromatic number of this graph is equal to three? This is C3. Okay, so, so let's look at this last, this last graph. It's got a little bit more interesting. It's, uh, it's got seven vertices. I think that's it. No, there's a line between, between the middle one and the bottom. Yes, there is. Very good. Thank you. So one, one more time. There's seven vertices. I want you to order the vertices in two different ways so that using the greedy algorithm, the greedy algorithm, you come up with two different values. There's a right way and wrong way. Well, I'm not sure we're answering the question that's asking. So we both were able to come with three. Oh, then, then, but that's not the idea. But that's not what we're okay, doing. so the I, one more time. So I want to order these vertices. I, I'm just going to order them randomly. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now I want to color this using the greedy algorithm. Using this order. Use one that works. 
using this order, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. How many colors do you need when I've ordered the vertices like this? Three. Three colors. Four, four colors. There you go, four colors. Okay, so, so one more time, I want to label the vertices in two different ways so that one time I use eight colors and another time I use more than eight colors. Or fewer than eight colors. I don't care which one you go first. Right? I'll eight colors. No, eight. Eight, eight, eight colors. C, C colors. C to colors. I say this. So, so let's see, how many colors do I need for this? This is color C1. Then color, then this one is color C2. Then this one is color? It's not, it's color. C3. C3. Then this has to be colored? Okay, it's adjacent to, is it adjacent to C1? No. Okay, so I can color this one C1. Okay, greedy. We're going to color it with as few colors. What about this one? It's adjacent to C1. Oh, and only C1. So C2. And what about this one? It's adjacent to C1, C2, and C2. C3. C3. The middle. Oh, the middle one. Oh, sorry. So it's adjacent to 1, 2, 1, 2. Oh, C3. Oh, C3. So I can color this graph on seven vertices with three colors. Can you come up with a different way? I did this randomly. I did not know what the answer was. Let me, let me ask this. Can you come, call up, come up with a way to label the vertices one through seven and color it with two colors? No. Why? C3. 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 Okay. Okay. Can you label the vertices one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and have to use four colors using the green And you did, right? Yeah. Does everybody have one that uses four colors? Mm -hmm. Using the greening algorithm? Can I just change the thing So I'm going to erase these. Is that okay? Rather than drawing it again, because that'll be a problem. Okay, so how do you want me to order these? I'm, can I start with one up here? Or where do you want me to start with one? So I want to label these vertices, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then use the greedy algorithm and use more than three colors. The top one. I want to, top, I want to start with the top one. So this is vertex one. Yeah, and then the middle one. Then the middle one, this is vertex two. And then like, three o'clock. Three o'clock? <laughs> two o'clock? Yeah, sure, two o'clock. <laughs> uh, and then down. And then down, four. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Down from three. Yeah, okay. Four. Four. Yeah, and then, and then around. That's Five, like six, and seven. Okay, so so now, and again, the idea is we're going to go in order. I could be wrong. So we're going to color, we're going to color vertex one, then no, no choice, C1. Vertex two, C2. so that gets colored with C2. Vertex three, oh, look what you've done. Vertex three gets, has to use C3. 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 Hmm. Vertex four, C1. careful, C1, C3, C2. Uh, vertex 5 is adjacent to C2 and C, sorry, C2 and C3. It's not adjacent to C1, it's adjacent to C2, C3, C2. C1. C1. 6 is adjacent to C1, C2, and, and C1. Let me try this again. Yeah, I think I did that. 6 is adjacent to C1, C2, and that's it. C3. C3. And 7? C2. Yeah, no, C3 and C1, so I could use C2. Yeah, no, I wasn't right. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so that's, I want you, I mean, it's, it's only got seven vertices. There's only so many ways you can label this. Does everybody understand the greedy algorithm? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Okay, so find find a labeling that requires four colors. Everybody understands what I mean by requiring four colors. Okay, and let me ask the, the, the big question. Is there a labeling, what about five colors? Is there one that requires five colors? Okay, so one more time. This is a question mark, and this is a question mark. And someone's going to remind me that this is where we're going to start on Tuesday. Homework is due Tuesday. Okay, we're going to start looking at uh, coloring, uh, coloring maps and move to Euler's theorem um, as we finish up the, the, the material in the course. Do you have it written? Questions? Have a nice weekend. Watch that Kentucky Derby. Hey. Trust me, it's, it's, a, it's, it's three weeks of partying. Oh, is it number six? For 23 years. Oh, I never went to the Churchill. I went to Churchill now. You can't go to the Churchill. You know, in good news, the infield is 150,000 people. And you can't get about 20 people in yeah, you don't see anything. It's fun to go to Churchill Downs when it's not like Put it on a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It looks very cool on time. I took I took the mathematician. Yeah. Yeah. Then take I did take it. <laughs> and uh oh, yeah. Did I get all this? Did he get it? Okay, so so if you ever see the air to store the horror shop. There's a, there's a great story. So, so um, he, he um, introduced something called random rats. And uh, he was actually doing that. And he was enjoying seeing the horses, but he had a plane to catch. And uh, so he's looking at the program, and he sees, he sees in like eight race, he's a horse named Randall. Is this in the movie? This is, no, this is in my talk. Okay. It was in my talk. Yes, yeah. I was going to say, so, I think I heard it. So, yeah, so, so he told me, to, he gave me $2, he gave me the $2, he, he said, bet on random, and I did, and, uh, and he called me up the next day, and, you know, it was like, no math, no, hi, how you doing? It was, Jacobson, how did my horse yeah, do? So. Random finished last. <laughs> he said, well, that isn't very random. <laughs> and he honestly, he hung up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is yes. Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody figured it out, not me, so I can't really take credit. <laughs> but that was, uh, I figured it out after I said stuff, so that's always. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Are you here tomorrow? Up.